Welcome to the Criminal Law and Procedure Lecture Series. At the end of each slide, there will be a 10-second delay. Use this time to stop the lecture and take your notes. When you are done, push play to continue. This lecture will begin in 5 seconds. Welcome to Criminal Law and Procedure Lecture 1.5 on Criminal Classifications, and let's again talk about mala in se versus mala prohibita crimes. You remember, actions that are inherently bad versus actions that are prohibited by society? This is one way in which society classifies human behavior, stuff that we know is bad versus stuff that we've learned is bad. And there are other ways to classify human behavior as well. For example, you learned about complete or general crimes. These are specific bad acts prohibited by society versus incomplete or inchoate crimes. These are general bad acts that lead to the commission of complete or general crimes. We then broke down inchoate or incomplete crimes further into attempt, what happens when you try to complete a general crime, and solicitation and conspiracy, what happens when you work with other people to try to complete a general crime. So all of this is about classifying crimes. But are there other ways in which we classify crime as well? There are, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So with that said, Go to the next slide. One way in which we classify crimes is by the length of a punishment and where that punishment will be served. To do this, we classify crimes into felonies and misdemeanors. Crimes are classified based on the length of time required to punish an offender and the place where the offender will serve that punishment. The more serious crimes are felonies. These are crimes punishable by death or confinement in prison of more than one year. One year equals 365 days or 366 days on a leap year plus one or more days in confinement. So what do felonies look like? All mala in se crimes are felonies. Murder, arson, robbery, burglary, attempted murder, anything that is inherently bad is considered a felony. So here's Morgan Freeman and Tim Robbins. Their characters are serving life sentences because they are convicted murderers and they're at Shawshank Prison. That's the state penitentiary. In Virginia, we call that Sussex 1 and Sussex 2. But here's the thing. Some mala prohibita crimes are also felonies. For example, committing three or more crimes, no matter the type of crime, we call that a three strikes law, that's a felony. You can be punished in a prison for more than one year. The lesser crimes are called misdemeanors. They are punishable by a fine or confinement in jail of less than a year. And all misdemeanors are mala prohibita crimes. So here's our friends Bo and Lou Duke. We're going to get them convicted of reckless driving and they're going to serve in jail that's run by Roscoe Coltrane. Not that Roscoe Coltrane. Roscoe P. Coltrane. He runs the jail, not the prison, in Hazard County. Go to the next slide. The other way we classify crimes is by your involvement in the criminal act. We call this classification by culpability. Crimes are classified based on the culpability or responsibility of fault of the offender. In other words, who did what when the crime was committed. And offenders are classified as either principals, these are folks who are more involved in the crime, or accessories, these are folks that are less involved in the crime. Principals are classified into two groups. A principal in the first degree is the instigator and moving spirit in perpetrating a crime. He directs and assists his associates in the actual commission. In other words, this 
is the mastermind. He or she is the person who came up with the idea for the crime, pushed the crime forward, and ultimately committed the crime. Here's the thing. More than one person can be a principal in committing a crime. You can have multiple principals in the first degree. They all have to be part of coming up with the plan, pushing the plan forward, and getting to its actual commission. Well, if you have a principal in the first degree, you have to have a principal in the second degree. So a principal in the second degree is present during the crime, aids and abets the act done, or keeps watch or guard at some convenient distance. In other words, these are the lackeys or the henchmen who help the mastermind commit the crime. Go to the next slide. People who did not actually commit the crime, but were still part of the criminal activity, are called accessories. And accessories are also classified into two groups. An accessory to the crime is identical to a principal in the second degree, except that he is not physically or constructively at the scene. What does this look like? Well, to understand the concept, we need ourselves a getaway car. There it is. So, if you drove the getaway car during the crime, you're a principal. But if you only provided the getaway car and you were not there, then you're an accessory. When it comes to accessory after the fact, which is the other crime, this is the only one of these things that actually looks like its own criminal act. There are three elements to prove that a suspect is an accessory after the fact. The felony must be complete, the accused must know that the felon is guilty, and the accused must receive, relieve, comfort, or assist the felon. So, here we got Tony and Carmela. Carmela asks Tony about what happened to somebody, and Tony turns around and says, After 18 years of marriage, don't make me make you an accessory after the fact. If Tony tells Carmela what he did, and Carmela helps Tony, she is now an accessory after the fact. Go to the next slide. So now you've learned all the legal theory behind what constitutes or makes up a criminal law. You learned that there are five elements to all criminal acts except for strict liability crimes and you learn that society breaks criminal laws into four distinct ideas by seriousness, by type, by punishment, and by culpability. When it comes to seriousness, we have mala in se crimes, these are inherently bad acts, and mala prohibita crimes, crimes prohibited by society. By type, we have complete or general crimes, these are specific offenses like murder. Then we have incomplete or inchoate offenses. These are things like attempted crimes or activity supporting a crime like conspiracy. When it comes to punishment, we have felonies. These are serious crimes and they're punished in a prison for more than a year. And we have misdemeanors. These are infractions and they are punished in jail for less than a year. Felonies are always mala in se crimes and some mala prohibita and misdemeanors are all mala prohibita crimes. Finally, we break it down by culpability or you're part of the crime, you're either a principal, you committed the crime directly, or you're an accessory. You were not at the crime, but you still were part of the criminal activity, or you helped the criminal after the crime was committed. Thank you for watching this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in class.